Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 17 in our incredible new tutorial series where you're unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon, and you can run on over there and get yourself one of these kits. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach teach you today. And what we're going to learn is we're going to learn how to use push buttons in MicroPython on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. What are push buttons useful for? They're useful for almost all projects because you can use them to turn things on, turn things off, toggle between one device and another device. So just toggling between things or turning things on and off or turning things up and down. They're very useful little components. And so that is what we are going to look at today. We're going to look at how to use those. OK, so let's see. I need to do a little tiny bit of Windows management here. Give me just a second. I just lost my uh, there it is. OK, got my sketch pad back, so that should be uh, that should be good. So let's just hop over here and let me show you. First of all, you've got uh, different types of push buttons in the uh, you've got different types of push buttons in the uh, uh, SunFounder kit. Some look like this one. This is the one I'm going to be using the bigger button. And then also there's some that look more like this in the schematic, which are smaller ones. But all of them operate exactly the same. And that's kind of what I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you sort of how they work and then a little bit how to code, hook them up and code them up. So let's take a look at this one. And what I want you to see is there are four leads. And what I want you to see is there's on one side two leads that sort of point towards each other. You see this one's pointing in, this one's pointing in. Those two there, this one and this one that are pointing towards each other, they are always connected together. This lead that's pointing towards this lead, those two leads are always pointed together. And similarly, on the other side, let me see if this will show a little better like this. On the other side, this one is always connected to this one. And then over here, this one is always connected to this one. So the pins that point towards each other are always connected. But where the action happens is between the pins that are not pointed towards each other. This one and this one are not connected until I press the button and then they are connected. On the other side, those two are not connected until I push the button and then they are connected. So the switch action is happening between these two. Now the small button looks a little bit different, but it's the same in the sense that the leads that are pointing towards each other are always connected and the leads that are not pointing towards each other, they're only connected when the button is pushed. And so I'm going to go ahead and press this back down into the breadboard, press that back down into the breadboard. And then I'm going to kind of show you what my schematic is here. It's very simple. And what I've got, let me get out of your way here so you can see a little better. I've got a schematic and then I've got the actual build. And what you can see is I've got the button, I've got the button, one leg of the button connected over here to GPIO pin 14. And if you look at your handy little card here, you can see that oriented like I am here, GPIO 14 is the second pin over. It's physical pin 19, GPIO pin 14, and I have that coming from the orange wire over to one leg of the switch. And then the other leg of the switch goes up to the ground rail, and then I come over here and it is 
physical pin three off of physical pin three I have coming up to establish that ground rail. And so it's a very simple circuit. You can do it based on my description, based on looking at the actual one or coming over here and looking at the little schematic that I put together. Okay, so that's how we hook it up, but how does it actually work? How do we get a reading off of it? Because we want to get user input from that button. Now we've gotten user input put before by looking at the potentiometer, reading from the potentiometer. That was doing an analog read with an on off switch we will be doing a digital read and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. Let me move this stuff around a little bit so I can get to my sketch pad a little bit easier. And so what you have to see is, is that a switch, you can just think of it as either open or closed. And that is not working exactly the way I want it. Give me just a second here and let me let me try that again with a more proper pen. Okay, so a switch is simply a two terminal device. And as the switch is just sitting there, it is open. Okay, it is open. And then if you press the button, what happens is the switch becomes closed. Okay, so while it's sitting there, it's open. It is in the non-conductive state. When you press the button, it becomes a short and then it becomes connected. Okay, it becomes shorted out. So how would I make a reading off of this? How would I make a reading off of this? Let me clear this off a little bit. Well, let's just say that I took one leg of the switch and I came up through a 10,000 ohm resistor, so I'll say 10K ohm, and then I connected that through 10K ohm to 3.3 volts, okay? Now I can come over here and I can connect that one leg of the switch. I can connect that to, let's say, GPIO14, okay? So GPIO 14 is connected to the top leg of the switch. Now, what is this going to read when it is in the open state or in the button not press state? Well, if this is open here, if this is open, there's no place for the current to go. So there's no current between the 3.3 volts and the GPIO pin. So how much voltage drops across this resistor? None. It's going to see what? It's going to see 3.3 volts. That is a 1. So it is going to read a 1. Well, now let's imagine that instead of that, what if we came in and we pushed the button closed. Okay, we press the button. Well, in the pressed state, we'll call it the pressed state, what is going to happen? There is a path from the 3.3 volts through the 10K resistor down to ground. The 3.3 volts is going to drop across this resistor and GPIO pin 14 is simply going to see what? It's going to see ground. It's going to see zero and it is going to read a zero. So you could actually go in and hook this up. You could connect to pin 14, just like I showed you there. Then you could take a 10K resistor and you could connect that 10K resistor from that GPIO pin up to the 3.3 volts on the board. And then you could sit there and if you didn't, it made a make a, a read and I'll show you how to do the read. If you make a read from that button with it not pressed, you're going to read a one because you're seeing the 3.3 volts. If you press the button, you're going to be reading a zero because you're going to be seeing ground. You could do it that way. There is a simpler way to do it. And the simpler way to do it is to activate the GPIO pin to activate the GPIO pin where on the inside of the device, on the inside of the Pico Zero, it hooks the GPIO pin to 3.3 volts and activates the 10K pull up resistor. This is the pull up resistor. 
okay? And if you give the command to connect to 3.3 volts and to activate that resistor, then in your circuit, it becomes very simple. All you have to do is take the GPIO pin and hook it to one leg of the switch and hook the other leg of the switch to ground, okay? Just like that. And then all of this resistor and 3.3 volt stuff is happening on the board. And so it's much easier to do that. And as we begin to do the circuit, or as we begin to do the code, I'll show you the command that allows you to do all of this with one line of code, okay? Makes it a lot easier. Okay, so let's switch back over here. And then you need to go ahead and get this set up. And what you can see is I will be using, <clears throat> I will be using the internal pull-up resistor. And so you can see in my circuit up there and in my schematic, I do not have a external resistor because I like to use those internal pull-up resistors. Okay, so enough of all this talk. Let's jump in and see if we can write some code. So let's see if I can come over to the code view and that would be right here. And I'll let you still look at the uh, device up there so you can look at the little overhead of my uh, breadboard so that you can continue to sort of see what happens as we go on. Okay, so we're going to be using that GPIO pin 14. So we need to, from machine, from machine, we're going to import pin. Okay, now we're going to need some delays in here. So from time, import sleep and now what is my button pin what pin was my button hooked up to it was physical pin 19 which was gpio pin 14 so my butt pin my button pin my button pin is going to be equal to gpio pin 14. now this is the command like normally you would think we would make that that butt pin, we would make it either an input or an output, but I'm gonna show you how to make it an input and activate the 3.3 volts and put that 10K pull-up resistor in there. And it's really quite simple. I'm just gonna create an object, my button, and that is going to be equal to pin. Well, which pin is it? It is butt pin, and then what is the, is it gonna be an input or an output? It's gonna be pin dot in because I'm going to be making readings from it and now I've got to turn on the 3.3 volts and turn on the pull-up resistor which is very simply I just say pin dot dot all uppercase well pin uppercase p little i n and then uppercase p u l l up it is as simple as that and now when it executes this command it is going to make pin 14 and input, it's going to internally connect pin 14 to 3.3 volts through a 10K resistor. Okay, now let's see if we can make some readings. So I'm going to say while true, when is true, true, true is always true. So I've created an infinite loop. And now I want to know what the button state is. The button state is either a one, meaning it's not pressed or a zero, meaning it is pressed. So I'm going to make a reading. My button state, my butt state is going to be my button, that's my object dot value. And when I do that, then it is going to read. It is going to read whether the uh, button is being pressed or not. Okay, now what we are going to do is we're going to say print but state. And then what I am also going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of a delay in here, a sleep of about 0.1. Okay, now when I press this, what do I expect? Well, from over here, what I expect is, is that when it is not pressed, when it is just sitting there, it should read a one. When I press the button, it should read a zero. And so when I'm just running it and I'm not touching it, it should read a one. So let's come up here. Let's everyone hold your breath. Giddy up, look at that, it's reading a one, okay? And that's what we expect. Now the real question, the real question is gonna be if I come in and I press the button, do I see a zero? So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna press the button, boom, zero, 
one, zero, one. So this is working. It's very simple. And now what can I do? I can incorporate push buttons into my project. And I'm going to give you a homework assignment. And that homework assignment is to incorporate a push button for the first time into a Raspberry Pi Pico W project. And what I want you to do is I want you to get your red LED and I want you to get your 330 ohm resistor and I want you to get a few more wires and then this is what I want you to do. I want you to make an on off switch out of this button for the LED. Listen carefully. You come in, you press the button, the LED comes on. Okay, what's the LED now? It's on. I come in, I press the button, the LED is now what? Off. So I turn it on, I turn it off. That is your homework assignment. And then next week I will indeed come in and I will show you, I will indeed show you next week my solution to the homework assignment. And then we're going to be playing for a couple of lessons with LEDs and buttons and buttons and LEDs. Again, an LED is a great way to give user input to your project. A potentiometer is a great way to give user input to your project. And then LEDs are great output devices because we're learning all this input and output and thought and algorithms. And we're learning to think like an engineer using simple components. Now in the kit, there's some very exciting components and we'll be moving to those exciting components after we learn the fundamentals on the simple things like buttons, potentiometers, and LEDs. In that way, when we move to the more advanced components, you're less likely to make silly rookie mistakes and burn something out or damage something that's a more expensive component. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Guys, I hope you are enjoying taking these classes as much as I am making them. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. If you leave a comment down below, that will help us with the old YouTube juice. And then also, I need you to post your homework solution. So when you do this homework, I need you to post it to YouTube, leave a link down below that links over to your homework solution, and then on your video, link back to this video. Okay, so anybody that looks at it can kind of see where you are coming from, if that makes sense. And guys, finally, always, most importantly, share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys next week. <laughs>